Hi everyone, this is Chris from saltwaterwitch.com. Check out my astro stuff there, images, automation projects, and more. So this is a quick update on my micro observatory project. You can't see, but I'm doing air quotes there, micro observatory. But that is essentially what it is. So here's my situation, and this is obviously a common one if you don't have an observatory in your backyard. So there's a limited amount of clear night sky, and that's with or without a moon. I have a limited amount of time to set up all the gear necessary for a night's imaging run, I, like a lot of, lot of you. I don't have an observatory in my backyard with everything ready to go, mount polar aligned, cameras cooling down, roof or dome rolling back. I don't have that. I have to set up every time and that takes a lot of time and not, I don't always have that. So, but what, so I, I've been thinking about this for a long time, uh, instead of building something large, a large structure that's essentially a small a, a shed with a roll-off roof dedicated to you know a telescope or several telescopes. What if I built something that I didn't need to get step inside or get inside at all? This you know this all this equipment is automated. So so what if I had something like a self-contained weatherproof box with just enough room to fit an equatorial mount and a scope? You know, even if it's not my main mounted scope, wouldn't it be nice to have an astro set up ready to go at any time, ready for that next break in the clouds. So that's where I started with this micro observatory project. So my goal was to, is to be able to set up a self-powered astrophotography system that can remain in place through any weather while protecting the equipment and, and it also has to be operational and ready to image within a few minutes. I don't need it to be fully automated for now. This is a fairly complicated setup. All of these, all of our Astro setups are fairly complicated. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this in steps. The main, uh, certainly steps from the observatory side. You know, the main missing piece of automation is raising and lowering the lid, which would be like rolling off the roof. That same, that same process. Of course, all the, all, all my Astro gear is automated, you know, except for a motorized cap, which won't be necessary without the ability to remotely open and close the lid. So. I could save that for another time. So this is what I'm shooting for. I look outside, the weather looks clear enough for imaging. I look at maps, I look at app, my apps on my phone, that kind of thing. This looks like a good night. I select a target or two for the night. I walk out to the micro observatory, unlatch the lid, set it aside, take off the telescope cap, power up everything. I have my mount in the parked position. That's the horizontal position. I move that from that position to a home position. That's with weights down and pointed at the NCP. Then I walk back to the house. I remote into that astro controller. Uh, right now I have an i5 Windows 10 machine running. I load an existing sequence or create a new one for the selected targets and I'm ready to run. That's it. I don't do polar alignment. It's all done. It's all ready to go. If I could get, if I could have all of that going uh, in the next month or two, that would be awesome. So we'll, we'll see where, the, where it goes, but this is my update on where I am today, because I did start this a while ago, mainly to do just some weather testing and see what this, how the, I didn't want to put my equipment in this box without really somewhat thoroughly test it out to see how it would do in weather. So I started testing this, I, I started testing the idea of this a couple years ago. I saw some people doing the same kind of thing on YouTube. I loved it. And I did, I started with like a wood frame and I was trying to get the, a, a, you know, an ideal size for it and all that. And I kept, you know, it kept getting bigger and bigger. And I, you know, I wanted, I didn't want something massive in the backyard. So I did some research on shipping crates. Um, and I settled on this giant watertight SKB, it's the company, plastic molded shipping container with 27 inch, which is 68 and a half centimeter interior dimensions. It's a cube. So it's pretty roomy relatively roomy small S small and it's you know you're not going to be able to fit a large mount and scope in there but it's, it's it's enough for a small mount and a scope as you see so it's made from some really sturdy impact resistant and uv stabilized polyethylene which is lldpe for those of you really into plastic it has stainless steel latching hardware it's it this is oh, this is ideal I, I guess almost ideal ideal would probably be 30 or 32 inches cube but you know but I can settle for this. So the stock hinges and straps didn't work for my purpose and I've drilled off the hinges. That, so that's an SKB shipping crate um, case I'm using. It's an SKB R series 2727-27. So I think that means it's 27 inches cube. Waterproof utility case. Uh, the link to this on the, on the SKB site is in the description below. Right now I'm actually running some temperature and humidity tests. 
summertime ones. It's very humid and around, uh, it's around 86 Fahrenheit, 30 Celsius outside, so pretty warm. I also had this box out in the yard, closed up and latched all winter long. And temperatures regularly get down and sometimes stay down well below zero degrees Fahrenheit. So negative 12, negative 20 C is pretty common. So far, so good on the temperature. As long as I cover, put this reflective cover over the top and I have these weights, you can see the weights on there. If I, so I will have to build that into the whole system, especially in the summertime. So my, my box temp sensor in that's inside the box, I have a Raspberry Pi based um, humidity and temperature sensor in there that's running its Wi-Fi and it sends out every five, 10 minutes, it sends out a signal. And it's well below the outside ambient with the humidity and the temps, they're maxing out because I have this reflective cover on it. They're maxing out around 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So 27, 28 C. That's warm, but not destructive. And I wouldn't be operating the mount at those temps. So it would be, it would cool down in the night, whether that's summer or winter, it might be much cooler in the, in the winter time, obviously. But um, that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, actually I'll, I'm, that's, that's about it for now for, the, for this micro observatory project. It's, it's going well so far. I will have to make a few modifications. I don't want to say modifications. Like I, I'm planning to use the, uh, my CEM 25P, my Ioptron mount as the main mounted side there. And as you can see, and also going with the, uh, uh William optics space cat 51 as my scope. Cause it's very small. Uh, right now I got, I've got an ASI 071. I have the color camera on there, but I will probably be removing that lens, uh, the hood that, that screws on. William Optics designed it to have to, su to support 55 millimeter filters on the front, like a camera lens. I actually have a small, a short, much shorter, maybe an inch and a half or two screw on lens hood for that 55 millimeter filter thread. And uh, I'll add that on. And that's where the, um, uh, the dew uh, heater will go. The dew strip will go right now there's the clearance is uh, is too close for me you know it's pretty close all the way around but it's too close and it actually will bang into the side if i swing the the deck all the way to the to, so it's like it's almost horizontal and then i bring the the ra down i could actually bang into the side with it i don't i don't even want to get close to that so i'll probably run this with a shorter lens hood that's essentially what i'm going to do keep keep do control and all that good stuff but i will uh, i'll well i'll post an update when uh when this gets out in the yard, right now it's just on the deck, you know, sort of in testing mode. And uh, well, that's it for the micro observatory project. It's going well so far, and uh, we'll see uh, see if it keeps going that way. Uh, clear skies, everyone. Uh, check out my site, saltwaterwitch.com, and uh, well, we'll see you next time.